So hi, we're with Eric Devlin with Premier Transportation in Dallas. Eric, Good afternoon, Jim. Thank you very much for being with us. We appreciate that. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about your business in Dallas? Okay, great. Uh, Premier Transportation, founded in 1996. We started with two cars. We started with a white town car with a red interior and a champagne colored uh, car with a green interior. And then it's a, I wish I had saved those vehicles. It was uh, um, the completely wrong vehicle to buy. I had no idea what I was doing. Quickly changed into the, the black uh, Lincoln Town cars. But in 96, we started with two, two cars, three employees, and now in 19, or 2019, we're at 97 vehicles and over 150 employees total. Wow, that's impressive. Um, I had the opportunity to be at your grand opening of yeah. your new facility. Right. Why don't you um, tell our viewers a little bit about that facility, the size of it and capabilities right. of the vehicles? I think the, the number one reason why we decided to do that is for the morale of the, the office staff. We, um, we outfitted the office with all of the technology, painted it fun, fun colors, uh, have um, lots of amenities for our employees. Then and that's about nine, eight or nine thousand square feet, and then we've got a forty-five thousand square foot uh, warehouse that houses everything from our sedans up to our mini buses. Our coach buses are then out on a lot outside. Uh, we've just purchased our twelfth motor coach, and so uh, it's it's really provided um, a continuity to our processes, so that if we're not in a lot three or four blocks away. The coach bus operators don't feel like redheaded stepchildren, you know, they're part right. of the team, everybody's together. And uh, it's really helped morale and uh, it was a great real estate investment as well. And so, you know, for all of those people thinking about, you know, renting versus buying, if you can buy, uh, you know, that, that uh, added um, uh, long-term equity play in your real estate is important to to hedge some of the losses you might have in your company. Great advice. Yeah. Great advice for operators. Um, so you're in Dallas, which is uh, a very highly competitive market in the Correct. ground transportation field. Um, what is Premier doing to differentiate yourself between other companies? Well, you know, our uh, with every limousine company, you talk about service. Um, we talk about branding, we talk about consistency with our chauffeurs, we talk about a servant's heart. We have that plastered all over our, uh, our office. Um, and um, understanding that every phone call must be uh, you know, the biggest and best and, and most important phone call that you're gonna take that, that 15 seconds or that 20 seconds. And uh, we um, try to instill that throughout our, our uh, chauffeur corps and our office personnel and we think that's what really differentiates us. We've got great competitors in the market, we're all friendly, we, we work well together um, and um, we just try to go that one step further. We use the football analogy, we're from Texas and so we use football. You know you start on the one yard line and you drive all the way down to the one yard line and you can't punch it in for a touchdown. Right. And you've done everything right for 99 yards, and then you screw up on the last yard, you know. And so the consistency of from start to finish, the phone call to the billing process, um, in a timely, professional, courteous, appreciative um, style, is what I think differentiates us. And and you mentioned that you're all friendly operators that mm -hmm. work together. Yeah. So I know that um, within your area, you have the DFW Association. Correct. Um, how important is that to operators to belong to a local, regional, or even their state yeah. association? I think just like coming to the LCT show, um, the uh, the networking um, uh, opportunity for some of the smaller op operators, the mentorship that some of us as larger operators can provide for the, the smaller operators, um, rules and regulations, uh, coming together as a cohesive group to go to the city of Dallas or to DFW to, to make changes. We just had great um, uh, improvements in our parking and our staging area at DFW because of the DFW Limousine Association. So any market that you're in, I think that being part of the uh, local association, the the visit we have the visit Dallas, which is the DCVB, um, MPI, uh, HSMIA, the Association of Wedding Planners, all of these things are very important for our operators with one car up to a hundred cars, so that you can learn from one another, you can network, 
and um, I want to do business just like here with people I know and local affiliates that come and say hey I want your work if I don't know them I'm not going to give them work sure. and, and so that's where the, the association can help. And these um, these groups that you belong to, I'm, I'm assuming you belong to them, that you, could I characterize that as an investment to your company? Sure, all of them cost. Um, it's an investment in money. It's it's usually nominal. The DCVB is in a, you know, two or three thousand dollars for, and they base it on the size just like um, uh, the LCT does. Um, but the real investment is time right. and, and having somebody participate. And so it's worthless if you pay three or four hundred dollars to be a part of an association or a group and then never participate. Yeah, I, I hear a lot of operators that say they join their local chamber of commerce and then they say they don't get anything out of it. And I ask them, well, what was your participation? Correct. Did you go to anything? Right. I mean, you can't really, you can't just send in dues to an association and expect that right. something magically is going to happen and you're going to get all kinds of new business. Um, Dallas has a lot of hotels. And, and one of the questions that I'm asked frequently um, as a feature writer for LCT is how do I break into the hotel business? And you know, over, over time, you and I discussed this a little bit before the interview, that times have changed. There was a time that basically a concierge or doorman owned the hotel. And mm -hmm. if you didn't pay them, you didn't right. give them their kickback. It's the, it's the $10 bill taped to the underside of the trunk. So when the trunk goes up, they put the luggage in, they pull the $10 bill off, and the bell, the doorman and the bellman and the concierge are happy. That that doesn't happen anymore. That was how it was originally. Sure. There's a there's a local big hotel I won't name it in Dallas that requires a fee a a, a curb fee, based on occupancy. So it's ten thousand dollars a month. If there's eighty percent, it's eleven thousand, twelve thousand based on the occupancy. Um, so you're in the hole ten or twelve thousand dollars before you get one run. And um, we don't participate in the, um, the exclusive um, provider for a hotel. We infiltrate the hotels through the associations, through our salespeople getting to know the director of catering, the concierge, the director of the uh, rooms, um, sometimes the general manager. But, um, you know, just ingratiating yourself with service and presence, you know, uh, not presence, your presence <laughs> right. and um, uh, those group, what you want out of the hotels are the groups. The curb is gone in the hotel industry. You sit at any big hotel and watch and everybody comes out with their phone and they see a Prius pull up or a Corolla and you know what's going on there. Right. There's, I would, I would recommend people not pay to be the curb service for a hotel. I would, I would uh, invest my time with the directors of the various departments for referrals for groups. Um, and then the DMCs have a, a kind of a hold on in Dallas. This DMC might be the Fairmont and this DMC might be the Anatole. And, and so if you have relationships with them, they're getting the business most of the time. And so you're the provider for there and you're getting it, you know, one step down the food chain. And for our younger operators uh, who might not understand the term DMC, that is a destination management company. And they basically put together every single aspect of a uh, convention or, or a meeting planner and, and right. work with um, different transportation providers. You have airport transfers, you have dine arounds, which in the evenings they go out, um, some, some uh, VIP stuff. You know, if they bring spouses, the spouses might go off uh, the, during the day when they're having their meetings to do something fun. So, um, yeah, understanding the relationship between DMCs and hotels is important. And um, speaking of tourism, you mentioned that you've um, developed a new division of Correct. your company that is handling uh, touring uh, needs. Tell us a little bit more about that, yeah. please. Um, Premier Tours Global was started on March 17th of 2017. And um, I purchased a uh, existing um, tour company and we've grown it uh, and essentially uh, we build tours and then market those tours to the people in Dallas. That's one of our verticals. Uh, so we might take a tour to um, Waco to see Magnolia Farms. That's a popular deal, the fixer-upper uh, folks. Uh, we'll, take, we'll build a tour to go to Grand Canyon. We'll build a tour that we fly into uh, Lexington and then do the ARC um, uh, tour. 
uh, we've got an Ireland tour that we're building, and so we'll, we'll take people over there. And so it's just another, um, another revenue stream for Premier Transportation. Um, and then there's what's called a receptive, which means other tour companies say, hey, we need help in Dallas, will you build this for us and do it for us? And so there's that farm in, farm out type of relationship with other tour companies. Great, that's yeah. fantastic. And it's, and it's doing well, we're, our revenues are up. Um, and uh, it's uh, it, it's a huge huge success for us. Uh, one last question: any any trends that you're seeing within your local market area or within the nation that uh, you're intrigued with that you want to participate in or you want to share? Well, one of the things that um, is happening in Dallas that's um, a little like um, uh, the TNCs that we all know um, is they're doing a membership based um, ride share, and so you pay a thousand dollars a month and you get so many hours and that's something I'm looking into doing with my clients to to um, provide that type of service that they can um, count on they can share uh, with family sure. members or, or, or people um, that I don't, I'm not um, real versed in it yet but you know I'm assuming that would help our cash flow and you get this upfront um, yeah. membership on a monthly basis you know, we're all about um, protecting our clients and and growing our business. And as our keynote speaker said yesterday, you know, get up off your butt and go do it, and quit complaining. And uh, you'll 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 feel better about yourself. You'll be proud of what you do. You're you're you'll inspire your employees. And uh, you know. Yeah, I did that um, in the real estate market. Mm -hmm. I, I started selling blocks of time mm -hmm. for realtors that wanted to take families uh, where the whole family, you'd have six people riding in a limousine, mm -hmm. made it a little more upscale, but I'd sell them blocks of time of either 20 or 40 hours. And right. you know they could take one family on a five hour tour and take another family on a two hour tour. Right. But um, anyway, Eric Devlin, Premier Transportation, thank you so much thank for being with us. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you for your time. All righty.